involved in, in interrogating terrorists. Um, yes. How important was al-Aki within al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula? Well, within al-Qaeda and the Arabian Peninsula, he became an inspirational figure. He became the spiritual guidance, if you want to call it. Um, however, his uh, focus and his importance come to the recruitment of terrorists and potential terrorists in the West, especially in the United States and in, in the United Kingdom. And we see that again and again uh, with most of the operations that took place in the West and in the United States. Like since 2009, for example, Anderson, mm -hmm. Uh, most of the attacks, if not all the attacks that took place in the United States were not planned and organized in Pakistan. Mm -hmm. That was shifted to the Arabian Peninsula, Al-Qaeda, was shifted to Yemen because of Halal Laki. He's an excellent English speaker. He is uh, very knowledgeable about the culture. He used the new media and the Internet to recruit. And he single-handedly uh, created uh, what we have today, uh, the threat that we have today, the, uh, the, the homegrown terrorism. Mm -hmm. People who never joined al-Qaeda, never went to the training camps in Afghanistan. However, they were able to read Inspire magazine uh, who, uh, who, uh, that was published by Samir Khan, right, who, who was, was also killed, killed with in this him, attack. Absolutely. And listen to his sermon and look into the videos of uh, Al Qaeda uh, produced uh, from Yemen over the internet and join the organization. It's amazing that this guy and, and this other one, both who were killed today, were sort of at the epicenter of a lot of the recent attempts in the United States. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, and his influence is way, goes way beyond the Arabian Peninsula. I mean, uh, the underwear bomber, Omar Abdel Muttalib, is a perfect example. Omar Abdel Muttalib, a Nigerian kid, he attends a sermon in an East London mosque where mm. Al-Awlaki was the imam. He uh, becomes so impressed by Al-Awlaki, he goes to Yemen. He gets recruited by Al-Awlaki in Yemen to blow up an airplane over Detroit during Christmas of 2009. Mm. So that gives you an idea about the global influence that Al-Awlaki did. And if we didn't kill him today, in five, ten years from now, he could have been uh, the next bin Laden. It's interesting, though. I mean, I, I've, listened, you know, I've seen some of his stuff on the Internet. I, I don't see him as being this huge, great, charismatic figure. What, what was it about him, you think? Well, it is his ability to communicate Al-Qaeda's rhetoric, bin Laden's rhetoric, in English, in mm -hmm. a way that people in London, people in the United States, uh, a kid who's watching Qaeda propaganda uh, videos in the basement of his mother can understand and can relate to. Mm. W was it legal to kill him, you think? I believe so. You know, this individual declared war in the United States many times. He was involved in every terrorist plot since 2009 until today, and that took place on the homeland. I mean, uh, Major Hassan, for example, Nidal Hassan, uh, the Times Square bomber, uh, the uh, Cargo plot, right. um, and, and you name it. All these plots have been uh, have been uh, linked to him. Um,